Hello friends, I'm Karen from Close to My Heart and we are going to create a layout together today. Before we get started though, I just want to remind you to like and subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and be sure to turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any of our fun Close to My Heart videos. Let's take a look at what I'll be scrapbooking today. I have in front of me some really fun photos. Probably all you're seeing on camera is a bunch of the number 24. This was a dance competition that my granddaughter Sage um, was at a couple of weeks ago and she did amazingly well. She was awarded the top, it's a national convention, she was awarded the top dancer for her age group, um, a scholarship, a national scholarship, and um, got to dance with some amazing instructors. Like if you are a dance person, you'll probably recognize the name Ty Stiorio from So You Think You Can Dance in Many Other Places and Maxim Shemerkovsky from, um, what is that one called? You know, the ballroom dancing competition thing. Anyway, she got to do all of those fun things, take some great classes and also compete. And she also sprained her ankle on the first day. And this is the part I'm most proud of. This is cool this award and all the people she got to train under at this competition and convention. But the part that I was most proud of is she sprained her ankle. You can see her at the hospital getting x-rays and she didn't want to let her team down because she was the soloist in almost every team dance. And so she just did her very best, went out there on that little sprained ankle and did amazing as you can see. And I'm so proud of her. Um, this dance right here where she's the soloist in took first place at the convention. So I just felt like I wanted to do these photos justice. You can see that they're very, very bright. And so I grabbed only a few papers because I think sometimes when we have photos like this, we think, oh, I've got to use a bright yellow paper and a bright blue and a bright purple and pink. And really, I like to let those photos be the main event on my page and maybe accent, small accents with some of those um, pieces and just choose some more neutral papers and one color from the photos to use for the paper. So that's what we're gonna try and do today. That's why I've grabbed this. The reason you see a couple of um, stamped papers here are is because I made this card a couple of weeks ago and loved it. And when I um, was printing these photos, I remembered this card and thought, I used a lot of the colors that are in these photos on that card only in a very soft palette. You can see I've used the pink and the yellow and the orange and um, some greens and things. And I thought, this is a stamp set. I'll show you the stamp set that I brought. Um, that is really kind of a card stamp set. And you can tell mine's very well loved but it has lots of different flowers and some really beautiful sentiments like let your smile change the world, your smile makes life more beautiful. All of those things are things I would normally put on a card. And when I remembered this card and thought this would be something that maybe could inspire this layout, I decided to see what I could do with the stamp set. So I did grab the stamp set that I used to create that little background here and stamped a couple pieces with it. This is just a stitched border. And so I have those added in. The other thing I thought about was, what will I do for a title <laughs> if I use this stamp set? And there are so many great sentiments in here. Thank you for being the reason I smile. But this one right here, your smile makes life more beautiful, I thought would make a great title, even though it's tiny. So. I think I'm gonna try and use part of this stamp, your smile makes life more, and then maybe do the word beautiful in large letters. So I did bring some, these are our irresistible sticker alphabet, and I'll just be coloring that and you'll see how that works to see if that will work with using this little stamp as a title. Um, another thing I like to do, because obviously I'm in our video studio and it is not where all of the art supplies are stored. So I like to think a little ahead more than I would if I were just creating on my own in my own studio before I come and do a process video. So you can tell I've grabbed papers, I've grabbed some stamp pads and some of these bright colors that are in the photos. Um, I've grabbed a couple of embellishments and things that I may use, but I've also um, printed my journaling. So I have that. and. The story I just told you is typed here. And the reason I knew what size to print that journaling is I looked at my photos and drew myself a sketch. I even do this at home. Quite often I will 
look at what photos I have to scrapbook and draw myself a little sketch of where I think they're all going to fall nicely. And it gives me a great starting point. So I drew myself a sketch of uh, one large photo, the one that I want to be the focal point photo, which is the one with her scholarship here. I printed that larger and then all of my other photos a little smaller so that this photo is kind of the star of the layout. So I knew I wanted it to be front and center and then be supported by all of these others. And since I decided to put my journaling down the side, I just printed it in a long skinny format. And so it can fit on this side part here in the sketch. So I'll be using the sketch as I create today. The sketch didn't come from any other place. It's just a sketch that I drew myself. So I may stick to the sketch. I may deviate a little bit here and there, but that's the direction I think we'll be going today. So I'm going to start by getting some paper cut and sort of laying the base of these down to make sure I'm happy with how that's going to look with my photos. And then we will start adding details with the stamps and um, a title and things like that. So let's get started. Um, you can see on my sketch I have both of these pages with a large piece on the top of an even larger piece. That's something I do, gosh, I would say 90% of the time when I make a page. I like something to ground that page, maybe a colored edge if I'm using a lot of white. It just gives it a little bit of personality without overtaking the layout. And so I thought maybe we should start with some black being the base. Um, and I'm using our solid core black, but you could use any black. And maybe cut this white down to go on top of it maybe a half inch smaller. So let's just move some of these things that I just showed you that I brought out of the way and bring in my trimmer and then I'll just start grabbing papers and we'll start playing with what might look really nice on this sketch. Do you guys ever cut two pieces of paper at once on your trimmer? I do it quite often. Um, you'll want to make sure if you do that that your blade is nice and sharp and hopefully this one is and I'm just going to cut a half inch off the side here and then do the same thing this other direction. And then that will be the start of our layout based on our sketch. I'm going to try and keep the sketch semi in the camera for you as we work so that um, you can see how it's inspiring what I'm cutting and doing. So I'm going to just lay these on top. And then um, I mentioned that I like to use color sparingly when I am scrapbooking something that has really bright photos. And so for the center strip, I may just try a strip of the black. So I'll grab another black paper and cut a strip. I don't know, maybe a four and a half inch strip to kind of ground these photos that I'm gonna put across. I can always go smaller. That's a good rule of thumb. Whenever I'm cutting paper, I always go on the large end of what I think I might use because that way I can keep cutting it down if it's a little too big. And then um, let's just kind of lay our photos on here according to my sketch a little bit. You can see I had one horizontal photo. That's because when I folded, when I printed my photos, I had a horizontal photo. So I wanted to make sure that I um, drew a sketch that fit the photos I have. I always print my photos first before I sketch. I'm, you probably do too if you do the same thing. This is my daughter-in-law, Daisha. She's amazing. And Sage's little sister, Baylor, went to cheer her on. This is a picture of Sage in her costume for the dance that they won the best of the convention with. And then her with some of her teachers and at the hospital. Okay, so on my sketch, I allowed for a strip down the side here. And I've got the blue paper I could bring in, but I'm actually thinking I want to use the blue paper more for mattes, just that little pop of color with it. And I stamped a few pieces of this stripey paper. Maybe I'll just see what that would look 
like coming down the side. You can always cut things whatever size we want and maybe here or here. Let's put it down here and see how that looks. That's cute. I'm liking that so far. I probably will cut these down. Obviously they're larger than what I need and I want that black edge to show. And actually I might move this to the top because I have planned to put a title near the bottom so it might be nicer to have that blank space down there. I really like how that looks. So I think I'm going to cut this to an 11 and a half because wherever I end up putting that, it, that's how white I want it to be, like that white piece. So 11 and a half. And then I don't think I want it to be too terribly wide over here. I want these photos to stay just on this white piece, I think. So I need to cut this to 11 and a half and then decide about what width I want it to be. Sorry, I can't get my fingers to work. There we go. Let's cut it off at 11 and a half and then kind of lay it out and see about how wide I want that to go. If I cut that at... Versa mats are nice. That helps me a lot. I don't know if you guys create on top of a Versa mat. It helps you be able to kind of judge. And I think I want about a three inch wide strip there. This guy is how wide? Let's make sure that'll be enough. This, yeah, it is. Actually, let's go three and a half. That is just under three inches. I'm gonna go three and a half. Like I said, you can always cut things down more. It's a little hard to glue things together once they're cut, you know? There we go. Okay. Let's see how this is looking. I guess I can just hide underneath the black whatever part I don't want showing, so I don't need to cut that down, I think. All right, I'm going to just cut a few mats so that I can see how it will look if I do blue. And so let's, most of my photos are three by four, so I think I'll cut three and a quarter by four and a quarter inch mats. So they're just a quarter inch wider. And then the four by six, obviously, I'll do proportionate to that. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think, of the photos that are that size. No, six. Two, three, four, five, six. So I'll cut six mats for those. This is called Capri, the color that I'm using right now. It's such a pretty blue and I think looks really nice next to those photos. Our cardstock is light on one side and dark on the other. And as I'm looking at them next to these photos, I'm really thinking I'm going to go with that lighter side because then the blue in the photo will be the bright pop. Yeah, I like that. Okay, I'm going to keep going here. Let's lay those out and see how they look. That is way cute. I think it's going to be really cute behind this orange, too. I think it's going to really make that orange on the walls of the x-ray room pop. And I've trained my daughter-in-law well. How many moms think when their kid's in the emergency room to take a picture and have them pose? <laughs> Thank you, Daisha. We need to document every moment, right? Okay, let's cut a piece to go behind there and see how that looks. going to go with four and a quarter by six and a quarter here. Are you guys like me? When I cook, I'm clean. When I get ready for work in the morning, I'm clean. When I scrapbook, I'm a mess. Things go everywhere. So 
excuse me if I have to look for a minute and find little things. Okay, I'm already looking at this and feeling like it just feels like everything's the same. So I think I want this photo, like I said, to be the star of the show. So maybe I want a larger mat on that and I'll put a layer of white in between the, which means I just wasted this piece of paper. That's also something about me. I tend to have to um, cut things more than once when I'm scrapbooking and just kind of winging it as I go like I am right now. I think I know what I want and then I get it down and go, nope, I wish I'd have cut that bigger. And see, I just broke my own rule. Maybe I should have done this larger to begin with. And maybe if we do a layer of white in between those. Ooh, I think I'm going to like that a lot. So let me grab some white cardstock. I think I have a piece right there. So that second piece of Capri that I just cut was four and a half by six and a half instead of four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I'll do this white four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And I think that double mat will even maybe make this stand out more. Yep. Love that. That's so cute. That's almost like I printed my photo with the white edge, which I did not, but we're going to pretend. And as, let's see what we want to do next. I'm definitely going to put my title down here at the bottom. That's something that I had already planned. So maybe that's something we can be thinking about next. But I'm, all, I'm also looking at this thinking, I've got this black strip going on here. And I feel like over here just feels all white. So maybe I just need a little strip right there to kind of set that off, that little side off. Is this 12 inches long? Yes, it is. I'm just going to cut a quarter inch strip and see what that does. Okay, that helps, don't you think? I think that helps bring in that black right there a little bit and kind of cordon off what's happening here. I also feel like the, this needs something behind it. And maybe that's another place I could bring in the black. Let me see what size I cut this. Two and three quarters by six and three quarters. So I'll just go a quarter inch bigger with a piece of black. Go three by seven. I like that. I don't always mat everything. Obviously, I have got mats sitting under everything right here on this page, but um, sometimes I leave photos unmatted, journaling unmatted. It just depends. I don't think there's a perfect rule to say always or never. Um, I actually really like that that's helping that journaling kind of stand out. And I love that my photos are popping. Okay, I feel like I'm ready to kind of think about this title. And I mentioned that I really liked the stamp that said, Your smile makes life more beautiful. And I brought the letters. Um, let me just show these to you close up because I'm sure you're having a hard day seeing them on camera. Hopefully, if I go like this, you'll see a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if that's showing very well. It has a like a clear embossed polka dot pattern on these letter stickers. You can see that they are stickers that lift. And I'm just going to add some color to these. I think I'm going to do black and spell out the word beautiful. This is the stamp that I want to use for the title. Your smile makes life more beautiful. And I will just use that. Your smile makes life more. And maybe try beautiful in these letters. So I'm just going to use a blending brush and um, a black stamp pad and color some of these letters and see how it looks. And quite often when I'm doing what I'm about to do, I'm just gonna use a, you can tell I keep blending brushes for every color. <laughs> There's my black blending brush. And I'm gonna grab some masking tape and then that way I won't get black ink on letters surrounding the ones I need. So I'm just gonna mask off around a B. And we'll start with this one and see if we like how it looks. Beautiful. If I like how that looks, then we will 
continue for all of the letters and beautiful. I'm also going to grab a tissue because when you first put the ink on these, and maybe even a scratch piece of paper to slide under there. But when I go up the edge, so I don't get ink on my Versamat. Um, the ink will stick to the embossed part, not as much as the regular part, but then you can just wipe it off and it takes the ink right off the um, those embossed polka dots. When you buy these letters, you also get striped ones, which is fun. So you can see what I mean right here. Can you see how those polka dots just got a lot more bold? And this is the letter B. Actually, I really love the way that looks. So I'm just going to keep going and spell beautiful. Did it. Okay, I'm going to add these to a ruler. This is a trick I learned from a friend, and I love this when I'm using alphabet stickers. I'm just going to put this on this ruler. It's going to help me do a couple of things. Number one, keep them straight. Number two, allow me to move it around on my page to make sure what height I want it to be and to evenly space each of these. So I will show you what I mean as we put these on here. So I'm just lining these up on my ruler and making sure that I've got this straight so that I can make sure they're straight on here. And I'll just spell out the word beautiful. It'll also help me on the ruler be able to tell how long this title is. I'm going to put this blue under there. I can see that you can probably not see what I'm doing very well. How's that? Better? Um, so I'm just adding my title on here. I'm just pushing lightly where I'm putting those on so that they'll still come off when I put them on my page. Okay, this goes to just under nine and a quarter, which I think is going to work great on my page. And I'll bring this over here to my page and show you what I mean about being able to move it around a little bit. So far, I haven't glued anything down. I'm going to definitely need to do that before I put my title on, but this will help me judge a little bit, I think, how high I want this all to go. I'll need room for, maybe these need to go a little higher. I'll need room for my word and my little, you make, your smile makes life more. And I think that looks nice. So I think I'm about ready to commit to start gluing things down on this page. So let's do that. As I'm looking at this, I'm feeling like those two are blending a little more into the black than I want. I'm going to try those with a white mat. Let's see how that looks if I try it on one of those and see if I like it better than this. I love our adhesive because it's forgiving for the first hour or two and then it um, becomes way more permanent. So I'm able to move things. I do. I like that better. Don't you think that makes that pop a little more than the blue? So I think I'm going to add white to this one too. I am liking the white way better on this page right here. Now I've got my title that we created. And I need to be able to put the Your Smile Makes Life More beautiful there. So I think I'm going to go ahead and... That should leave me plenty of space right there. I've got, let's see, about an inch and a quarter on each side. So I think I'm ready to put my title down. So you can see I'm just pressing on those letters and then I'll lift my ruler and carefully slide it out from under the letters. My E is the only one that just wants to stick with the ruler. There we go. And now I can just push those down. Okay, that is beautiful, don't you think? Now let's see, we've got this stamp here that your smile makes life more beautiful. I'm just gonna use another piece of that masking tape. I want that to sit right in here. So I'm gonna just cover that up so that I can 
just stamp that part that says you get, make sure and mask off the word beautiful. So I'm going to add this to a stamp block. And I'm even going to just re be really careful to only ink up the top of that. And this will just be my safety net in case I get a little ink on the word beautiful anywhere. Aha, perfect. Your smile makes life more beautiful. Maybe I'll show you that up close. I think when you think of your stamps and pieces, it makes them a lot more versatile because you can always mask parts off. Look how cute that turned out. Your smile makes life more beautiful. I have these pictures right here above it. And now I think I'm ready to add a few little accents with colors, but I want to get that second, like the main base of the page on the right page put together too before I start adding accents. So let's head over here. And now that I've added some white mats over there, I'm not sure I want all of these blue as well. I wonder what it would look like if I made this one black. Let's try. Let's just try it and see. I think this is why I'm so messy when I'm scrapbooking. I tend to make lots of cuts and lots of um, try lots of different things on a page before I'm ready to glue things down. And so I've got pieces flying everywhere. Let's see how that looks. That might look really cute with their little black berets. This was a, a dance to a Parisian song. Ah, love. I feel like that is bringing some of that black over there. I'm going to, I'm going to feel good about this and maybe commit to gluing this side of the layout down too. I'll add my photos to their mats. I especially love the blue under that orange photo. Okay, I'm happy with where we're going here. One thing I do like to um, wait to commit on quite often when I'm making a layout is where anything I know I'm going to accent around a photo, I like to wait to glue those down in case I want to tuck something under. With these being right against there, I don't know if I'll need to tuck anything under. I may regret that I put those down. Oh, I didn't. Good thing. Good thinking, Karen. Okay. I am ready to do some accenting. Now let's pull that stamp set in that we've been using. Um, in addition to that cute title we used, we've got all these flowers like I used on my card, which is hiding around here somewhere. I was going to pull it back in. I'm not sure where it ended up. Oh, there it is. I've got all of these um, fun flowers on my card that I thought would be a perfect accent to a really bright pinks and purples kind of photo page. And so I want to do a bunch of stamping of those. But before I do, I want to tell you what's unique about the stamp set. This is um, a stamp set. Every year we do a stamp set that's totally dedicated to Operation Smile. It's a wonderful charity that does cleft palate and cleft lip surgery for underprivileged children all over the world. And um, the proceeds from that year's Operation Smile stamp, all of them go to our donation to Operation Smile. And that is what this stamp is this year, which makes it make even more sense about all those quotes about smiles, right? So I'm just going to stamp a bunch of these flowers and cut them out and then kind of maybe add some color to them that match some of the colors in the photos and add them around. Now I mentioned when I have bright photos, I like to use just small pops of color. So the photos are the hero. And I think you see that's already happening. I don't want to take away from that. So what I think I'll do is, even though I probably will paint a little brighter than what you see here, I won't go as bright as what's in the photos because I think that's another secret to helping your photos be the star. So even if I were to have like photos, peeking, I mean, uh, flowers peeking out from behind things in the same colors, just lighter, it will make the photos still work. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking I might want to do. So I'll just move these out of the way and start stamping a bunch of flowers. There are um, single flowers and flower clusters and leaves. And I'm just going to stamp more than I think I would ever use because when I do stuff like this, quite often I have leftover, but I can always just slide them right down into the stamp envelope with the stamp set. So the next time I pull that stamp set out, I'll already have things stamped and ready to go for a project if I want to use those pieces I've already prepared. 
And I'm just going to start stamping several of each of the flowers and leaves. I'm just leaving a little space around them so that I can cut them out. Okay, I've got a bunch of that one. I'm just going to keep going with all the stamps in the set. Okay, as you can see, I went to town. I stamped a million things and cut them all out, and I just, um, with the magic of video, you didn't have to watch me do all of that, but I did save one as I was going along to finish painting to show you. So I'm gonna come over here where you can see me a little more close up, because this is a fun technique that I think a lot of people don't know about. I call it stamp pad painting. We're gonna come over here where you can see it a lot closer. and turn my mat so that I can paint. Now I've grabbed stamp pads in several different colors. A couple of greens that I thought would work for the leaves and they're, I've already painted to these and I know they're gonna work. So I'm going to grab my water brush. Um, for any of you that have not used a water brush before, this bottom part just fills up with water and you can use it to paint with. I'm also going to bring a little piece of scratch paper over here so I can dab things off and show you how um, I do stamp pad painting. So this is one of our stamp pads. This is Sage. I'm just going to squeeze it with my thumbs in the middle so that I'm pushing the lid a little bit down onto the ink. Then as I pull it open, you can see that I've got some ink in the lid. And I can come in with my water brush and pick up some of that ink see how much is on there so I don't get more than I want and start painting. Now I have stamped this with our intense black stamp pad and intense black is actually made for things like this. If you're watercoloring or using an alcohol marker on something, the intense black, um, once it's dry, it's not going to smear. So that's the black I chose to stamp in. It's also the black I used on those beautiful letters because it will do the same job as any of any black but it has that special property of not um, smearing. Now you can see when I'm putting this down, it's kind of the same kind of properties as painting. I want it to be a little darker down here on toward the stems. And I'm gonna add some darker ink too, like I have on those other pieces. Let me just pull one of those in that are what I'm coloring right now. You can see they're shaded down a little bit deeper. So what I did is I grabbed my rosemary pad same thing, just pushing right in the middle with my thumbs, picking up the ink, and now I'm going to go back to where I want it to be dark and add even a little more of this darker color. And you can see how I'm getting a really beautiful shade happening there, just like I would with paints. But this way, um, all of our stamp pads and papers are made to match, and I love that. So I know that anytime I use a color, of ink it's going to match the paper of the same color so um, that makes it nice to be able to color with matching things okay I think I've got that about what I want on my leaves I'm just gonna do this last flower with raspberry and I may add a little bit of shading to that yellow one too um, so let's pull in the raspberry pad I'm gonna make sure I wipe all the green ink off my brush before I start painting with raspberry because green and raspberry would make a nice brown flower, wouldn't it? All right, let's see if we can, there we go. I want it to be light to begin with. So, but where I put down first, we'll have the most ink. So I'm gonna put it kind of closer to where I want it to be shaded. And you can see this stamp gives, it's perfect. It gives me an idea of where it should be darker. It's already shaded by the artists that designed the stamp set. They've put little lines on here that show you where it's a little bit darker. So that makes it nice to paint. And so I'm gonna put the part that's darkest there and then come back with a little more watered down color to color in and go over the top of that to help blend it. I like to paint um, and go back over it while it's still pretty wet because then it will blend a little bit better. You can see how that's blending really pretty, but you can still see those darker areas that are shading. And then I can come back and kind of blend that a little more by taking the dark and blending it into the light. 
it really is just something that takes a little practice, just like watercolor painting. The more you do it, the more you learn how heavy a hand to be with your ink or light, um, with your paint or ink, depending on what you're doing. I love stamp pad painting. In fact, use it all the time and think that it's a great alternative sometimes to watercolor. Because like I said, I can make it match whatever I wanted to. This is going to get a little lighter as it dries. You can see the ones that I've already painted got quite a bit lighter. And then I'm going to come in with this melon color. I think I'm going to add a little bit of shading to this yellow rose. So I'm just testing it out a little bit on some scratch paper. And I'm just going to come in and lightly, really light-handed shade with that where it would be slightly darker. So you can do it with the same color like I did on this raspberry rose, or you can do it with a slightly different color that's got a darker feel to it than the one you've already used, and you can see how beautifully that turns out as well. I also want to put a little more of this melon ink right here on this one to give it a nice shaded area. And then everything that looks so dramatic here is going to be a little less dramatic as it dries. And I've already um, cut out all of the others that I painted, but I do want to show you a couple of cutting tips too that I used as I cut them out. When you cut out a stamp that you've stamped, it's always nice to leave a slight border. So you can kind of see as I'm cutting, I'm leaving a little white border there. Can you see that? That way I'm not nicking the, the line of the stamp, where if I put that down onto a cardstock that's a cord, like a what's a contrasting color, you would see all the nicks. Whereas if you leave that um, little white border around what you've stamped and colored, then you'll it's way more forgiving as you add that to a page. So let's go over here and start playing with some of these floral accents that I have created. And as you can see, I made a gazillion, but I'm fine with that because I love having little extras when I pull things out to be able to start to um, start a new project with. In fact, it's kind of what inspired this layout. When I looked at that card, I had a few extra roses in the package that I had colored and, and I was able to hold them right up to these photos and go, yeah, I kind of think that would be perfect. So I had a few already done to start with. All right, I've got these kind of laid out and I want to start using these floral accents. And you can see, I think I'm just going to pull the sketch in one more time for you. I've pretty much used my sketch for everything I need it for. The rest is just going to be um, where I decide to place things. So I'm just going to start grabbing a few of these things and putting them where I think they might look pretty. Maybe there it would be pretty to have some flowers in the corner. Maybe have a few peeking out from photos. And starting with the largest ones, I think that's helpful too. When I'm using accents to start with larger pieces and then I can always add smaller pieces. I also kind of love that that is coming over onto that piece. And I think I'm gonna want a larger piece up here maybe. And where else might I want some of the larger ones? Maybe over here by these. And hopefully I'll be able to lift these letters up a little bit if I want to tuck anything around those. With them being a sticker, I may have to cut around them, which is fine. Okay, let's see. I'm looking at this, loving the idea of tucking these flowers, but I'm also feeling like I want some sort of an accent across the bottom here. And I also think I want to move these guys a little lower to balance more with what's happening over here photo-wise. So, so far, so good. I'm looking at this stamp set. Just thinking maybe another stamp right there would be fun. There's one that says, smile more, worry less. I think I'm going to give that one a try right here. And then maybe add something to add a, a little bit of accent across the bottom here. That's darling. I'm glad I did that. 
If you ever are not sure, quite often, um, here's a trick we do in the art studio all the time here at Close to My Heart. Instead of actually stamping it right direct to your page and then go, oh no, I didn't like that and I need to move, redo this whole page, you can always stamp it on like a small scrap piece of paper and then lay it there and see how that looks. Or you can even take the stamp itself and lay it on your page and make sure that you like how it looks there on the page. So those are a few tips. Um, I have people tell me all the time they're scared to stamp directly to their stamp, to their layouts. And I think that is a great tip. Now I'm trying to figure out a way to do a border across the bottom. I don't want to do it with flowers because I want those to be my accents. And I did bring down this stamp set that I stamped these stripes with. And I'm looking at that stamp set thinking, I may be able to use that border across the bottom. That might be fun. This cute little scallop border. Let's give it a try. Let me grab a stamp block that that fits on. And this is a trick. When you're using a, a border stamp that's a little bit long and um, skinny, it's helpful to put it face down, almost like it's being stamped, and pick that up with your block. And if you put it face down on your versa mat, then it, you'll know it's straight. Cute. All right, I think I am going to add a little paper too so it doesn't look like waves because it kind of looks like waves right now. That is exactly what I think it needed. Just a little accent down there at the bottom. And now I'm ready to start putting some flowers down. And I think I'm about ready to start thinking about putting photos down too. I think I'll start here. I'm only putting a little adhesive right now, so I'll still be able to move them if I need to. Okay, now I'm ready to add some small ones. And actually, as I'm looking at this, I'm wondering if I want a little bit of color back behind some of these. I'm going to grab a light colored stamp pad just to ground these flowers a little bit and see how that looks. Uh, I'm going to grab speckled egg. Distress Oxide ink. I think a little bit behind right here would be nice, so I'm just going to lift that photo a little bit and use my blending brush to add just a little bit of that color peeking out, and we'll see how that looks with the flowers on top of it. And then I think I'll move to the other side and then come back and add small accents of florals over here. I'm going to let that go off the page and then just cut off the extra there. And I may need to go back and add a little more adhesive once that light blue shadow starts to dry because it's a little wet right now. Cute. That looks a little blank. I'm going to grab some of these smaller flowers here. Maybe a leaf. To tuck back there. Cute. And a flower. Maybe a yellow flower too. Cute. All right. We're going to do that. Tuck that under. Ooh, I'm going to overlap that photo just a little bit. I love that. These flowers are so, I think you look at them and think elegant, and you look at these photos and maybe wouldn't have thought to put them together, which I wouldn't have thought to put them together really either if I hadn't had that card already made and thought, oh, those colors are so fun. I'm going to add a little foam tape behind that one. And maybe while I'm sitting on this page, I'll go ahead and add a few more here and there with these. Cute. 
cute. Okay, let's see what else do I want added in here. I'm just going through all my flowers to see what I have to choose from. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait, see what I use on this other page and then come back. I'm going to set this guy out of the way. Bring this one in. And got those partially put down. I think I need to put some blue back behind that flower since we did that on the other page. And again, I'm overlapping onto my black a little bit and I'll just wipe that off. And maybe down here where this flower is gonna be, just gonna lightly lift those and add a little bit of ink behind that. Where'd I put my sticky note? I'm just gonna lay that over the top of my L right there so it doesn't get blue. I'm actually going to grab a black journaling pen and in a few of these places add a few dots. Maybe I'll do it where you can see me do it close up because I think this can add a ton of detail to something. I'm just looking at this feeling like I want to tie these dots in. So what if I did a few big, a few little dots, just almost like they're like little splatters. But I'll have a little more control than if I were splattering now that this is all glued down. I just think it needs a little bit more personality right there. You can do some big ones and some little ones. I think that makes a huge difference, don't you? Maybe I'll just do a few up here. Whoops, where you can see me. I love that little tiny bit of detail. And I'll bring this other page in and do the same. I'm gonna add a little bit more through this area where I've got a little more shadow coming out. Put it down here maybe. I didn't think to add a shadow here, so maybe I'll just give it a little more detail if I already stamped all that I probably would add a little bit of that blue shadow right here too but we're gonna pretend I never thought of that okay I feel like we're there let me bring this back over and move a few things so that you can see it really well and we'll talk through some of the things we did on this page okay you can see that I've created accents that are a lighter color than my photos, but in those same colors, just lighter, Oop, one hidden flower. And I think that's a great way to let these colors shine and still bring in some of the colors from the page. Because my colors were so bright, I chose mostly blacks and whites, just a tiny bit of color in mattes, and then those lighter colors in the um, flowers that I painted from that Operation Smile stamp set. And I made sure that the colored mats that I did use, I turned to the light side of the cardstock so that the brighter blue in the photos popped more than the mat itself. I did some stamp pad painting, which is a really fun technique. I hope you'll remember and try a little bit. And we used these fun irresistible letters, masked a stamp so that these letters could spell part of what the stamp had said and make it fit a scrapbook page. I am thrilled with how this turned out. I hope you enjoyed the video. And just as a last second reminder, don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on your bell notifications here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.